How long should you carry disability insurance? Having private disability insurance was wonderful for me when I had a brain hemorrhage in my late 50s. It paid the balance of my usual salary while I was hospitalized for two months and as I was recovering for three more months. California state disability income was primary, but it paid only about 15% of my salary. Private disability income paid 85%. As I returned to work part-time, my private disability insurance paid the difference between the part-time income I earned and my full-time salary. When I found myself unable to work even part-time, fake it till you make it wasn't enough. After trying for a year, I couldn't make it, private disability began paying my full salary again. My private disability insurance is now requiring me to apply for SSDI. They are retaining a disability attorney to help me navigate the nightmare process. I've resisted applying for SSDI due to the complexity. The initial form was 27 pages long. If I could fill that out, I could work. I have post-stroke hemiataxia. That means I lack coordination. My balance is poor and I fall frequently. I've broken four different bones and required surgery to bolt one bone back together. Since I don't have enough coordination to manage crutches and lack the balance required for a knee scooter. I could not get around at all for four months when I broke two bones metatarsals in one foot. I had to crawl from bed to the toilet. SSDI will be my next project. I have reams of documentation, CT and CTA scans, notes from neurosurgeries, MRAs, X-rays from orthopedists, visits to stroke neurologists who specialize in recovery and post-stroke pain, etc. Unfortunately, there is nothing they can do for ataxia except refer me to physical therapy and occupational therapy. I do the recommended exercises religiously and walk about 6,000 steps most days using either a cane or a heavy-duty walker. Fortunately, my husband has health insurance that covers me. Private disability insurance covers my income. I have many challenges, but income and health insurance are not among them. I am very, very fortunate. I survived the stroke. I am not in danger of homelessness. The premiums on disability insurance were a very, very good investment. Of course, I'd prefer never to have needed it, but I'm glad I had it when I did. Usually you want to be covered for as long as you are working and generating an income to pay your living expenses and miscellaneous bills. Once you become age 67 in the USA you can retire with 100% of your social security earned benefits. One can still be retired and have disability insurance income if they had been receiving disability benefits at the time of retirement. It all depends on your specific policy and any riders you were paying for. Remember, disability insurance is there to carry you through a short-term or long-term disability that prevents you from earning an income. If you are young and have a family that relies on your income, then it's more important that you are covered for disability with short-term and long-term disability insurance.